the world. The finale of Modoc season 1 saw the diminutive world conqueror forced to make a sadistic choice as he literally furred himself across time. For science's sake, and we're settling for nothing less than conquering the world. We got Iron Man's boot! <laughs> The final episode of Modoc season 1 ended with a dynamic meeting of the minds as the would-be world conqueror faced himself in a battle across time. Shut up! Oh, thank God. Tell me this ended in a climactic fashion, with Modoc being forced to choose between his family and the technological utopia he'd dreamed of building since childhood. Set in a reality similar but distinct from Marvel's MCU canon, Modoc focused upon the titular supervillain and his struggles to balance his family life and managing the scientific think tank AIM and all its treacherous underlings. You. Stark knew we were coming. You tweeted, current mood, about to attack Wall Street. The 10-episode first season detailed Modoc's fall from grace as his wife, Jody, filed for divorce and he lost control of AIM after selling it to tech firm GRUMBL. Oh, okay, thank God, you still exist. The portal must have just returned my college aid self to the year. By the season's end, however, Modoc had bonded with his children like he never had before and made peace with his chief rival at AIM, going on to form a new company devoted to science for science's sake. The season finale, Days of Future Modocs, highlighted how Modoc had changed, seeking his daughter Melissa's advice on how to get people to attend the bar mitzvah of his weird son Lou and Lou's equally weird robot duplicate. Leaves the strip mall. Have you gone through all of the permutations? While the resulting party was less than stellar, the Laos didn't mind much as the one girl they cared about attending showed up, and Modoc seemed to be on the road to patching things up with Jody. Unfortunately, the moment was ruined by the arrival of Modoc's past self, kicking off the final battle of the episode as the past Modoc tried to murder his future family. Modoc time travel and past self explained. The past Modoc had a been recurring threat throughout Modoc season 1, seeking to destroy Jody, Melissa, and Lou after he learned that his future self would become more worried about saving his broken home than fulfilling his dreams of taking over the world. This Modoc, who had taken on the name of the anomaly, gained the power to manipulate time after shards of the celestial chrono crystal which powered Modoc's time machine became embedded in his head after their first but fight. I was not because of these crystals in my head, I became unstuck in time. He held this power in reserve, however, first trying to kill Modoc's family with the assistance of the murderous mercenary arcade. The anomaly seemingly died during this battle, but this was revealed to be a robot duplicate, unsurprising, given how all of his plans to that point had involved robot duplicates. Nice pair of chinos. But it wouldn't change a thing. I've seen every possibility. No. I'll find a way. I mean, I beat you, didn't I? Yes. Having become unstuck in time after his timeline was made redundant, the anomaly began exploring potential futures, like Doctor Strange in Avengers, Infinity War, trying to find one, where some version of Modoc succeeded in taking over the world and building a utopian society. All these years, experimenting on myself, building AIM. The anomaly discovered that there was only one timeline where this occurred, one in which Modoc's family died tragically and their memory spurred him to finally defeat the Avengers and build a better world. This led the Anomaly to do what he knew the future Modoc couldn't and become the villain who killed Jody, Melissa and the Laos so that Modoc could fulfill his destiny. I did this? I mean, I do this? How? The finale ended in the not-too-distant future, with Modoc having become Emperor of the Earth. Despite ruling the world from a throne made out of Iron Man's armor, he was not happy and tortured the Anomaly in his lab trying to find a way to use the anomaly's powers to go back in time and save his family. Unfortunately, the best he could manage was to temporarily open small portals showing him his family in the past, as the anomaly smugly told Modoc that there was no way for him to have it all before finally dying as the chrono crystal shards lost the last of their power. Thing to do and it is 2009 so i did it but that gun was badass especially the rubber gr the episode ended with a vengeful emperor modok swearing he would find another way to time travel and save his family bringing them forward to the perfect future he'd built in their honor modok is literally his own worst enemy the final battle of modok took the subtext of the first season and transformed it into a literal battle between the best and worst versions of its protagonist 
As the anomaly himself noted, their battle was a glorious metaphor in which Modok had to defeat himself and the anomaly, in order to fulfill his own dreams of world conquest, had to become the villain in his other self's life. This conflict ultimately proved to be as self-destructive for the anomaly as the many alternate futures, where Modok died on the toilet while eating lasagna fresh from the pan like Garfield. It also created a wonderful encapsulation of the show's central conflict and Modok having to overcome his own worst impulses to secure the happiness and safety of his loved ones. Modok learns the real value of family. Modok's journey over the course of the Marvel show's first season was focused on his learning that he needed to consider the feelings of his family outside of what he wanted. I'm alive after you thought you saw me die? Robot. Lucky guess. Time to finish what I start. By the finale, he had learned to accept his sons despite their unconventional hobbies and respect his daughter's ability to be an effective villain, even if her gifts were geared more toward social manipulation than super science. He also learned to consider Jody's wants and needs along with his own and promised to try and work with her on being more considerate in the future with the hope that maybe their marriage could be saved. To become the Emperor Modok you've always dreamed of. It's their final gift. Absolutely not. I'll the cruel irony of the conflict between Modok and the anomaly was that the time remnant Modok managed to secure a Pyrrhic victory that didn't benefit him at all, apart from what little joy he could find in destroying Modok's family. Spoiler alert. I during my Torah reading. Magic blue. Why can't you just pick a The final twist of the season was that the anomaly may have succeeded in making Modok into an emperor, but that accomplishment meant nothing to Modok without the loved ones who made the world worth ruling. I'll save my family and bring them here. Modok will have it all! 